Hey everybody, what's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here back at you um, to bring you up to speed on my first listening test with, I'm going to change the name to Nemesis 11. Um, I think that is a better name because I am 11 Stereo. It, the, the, the manufacturer, the name of the product is from 11 Stereophonic. So we'll call it Nemesis 11 um, because it's going to be under spec okay? So the products that you receive from me under the 11 Stereo brand or 11 Stereophonic brand will be under spec instead of over spec So in other words, I will call this Nemesis 11 even though it is a 12-inch driver, Okay, so you will receive specs like that instead of the traditional way where things are hyped up and some things they 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 publish the peak numbers of something um, instead of the RMS or whatever they like to fluff things in this industry, right? Um, they like to give you four ohm spec instead of eight ohm spec. Well, um, I'm going to do it the opposite way. I will give you spec that is under, and then when you measure them, it's going to measure better than the specification that I give you. So we're going to call them the Nemesis 11, also because it's 11 stereo, so it fits along with that. And source point 10, nen point, uh, uh, Nemesis 11, mine's one, goes one more in typical form. And that's why it's 11 stereo and not 10 stereo, because I go one further then 10, which is max, right? I go one louder, one more. Hear the sustain? Anyways, so the first listening test sucked. The speakers sounded like ass, okay? But it doesn't matter because I know how well the drivers are made and um, it's just tuning now at this point, okay? We started out, you start out by throwing something at the wall and then you go from there, okay? And this is, again, normally I would not bring you through this part. I would do all of this behind the scenes and then I would just bring you a finished product like voila, look at the finished product. But it's gonna be more fun for you guys to, for me to just demystify this whole thing and show you what we go through. The first listening test sucked. It sounded horrible. It was peaky in the mid. It had no bass. So I know how to fix that. This is most likely gonna turn into a floor stander. So let me know in the comments below if you think, if, if that is something that would bum you out or if you're stoked about it. The benefit means you don't need to worry about a stand. Obviously in this, uh, in this example, what you saw, I'm using the stands, my Sonus Faber stands that I have off some little bookshelves just to hold up the prototype. But now the sides will go all the way down. It will be a full floor standing unit. This way we can get you guys bass response down into the 40 hertz range. Like, and I'm talking about maybe down 3 dB at 40 hertz, which is pretty freaking good. Don't even talk about 20, because if you start talking about 20 hertz, you don't know your head from the from from a boot your booty hole. Okay, because 20 hertz is unusable. I know we use it for other for you use it for foundational sort of rumble and things like that. It helps fill. It's like a good bass fill. Um, but there is virtually hardly any speaker that does that in any usable fashion. And it's definitely not flat. So anyways, this is usable all the way down to, I'm going to try and get it down to 40, a 40 hertz resonant frequency, which should be killer for playing. Now, other people were talking about like, oh, use a smaller driver because it's faster and all this shit. Okay, well, you know what? Guess what? I like to listen to rock music, okay? I like to listen to a lot of different things, but I like electric reggae, I like rock music, and I love snare hit, okay? This is where most speakers drop off and don't do shit is in the mid bass, the mid to the mid bass region. That's where that the kick drum and the snare hit is bap, you know? I want to bap. I want to dung 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 when the toms come through. I want to feel that drum, okay? And so I am building a speaker that will be very good at that, okay? Because I want you guys to get what you don't get from the typical audiophile speakers, which are made for, you know, maybe jazz and vocal and all that kind of stuff. These are not, I could create speakers for vocal clarity just the way they are. Actually, these are perfect for female vocals right now, okay? <clears throat> Absolutely 
you know, stupendous for female vocal. But that's not what I'm after here. I'm after worth, I'm after a speaker that is well rounded, that does everything, that can play rock music and play it accurately, where you get good drums, you get pap on the snare. When the toms hit, you feel the toms. You know, it's not just a tone, you actually feel that, okay? And that's what I'm after, and that's what I'm gonna bring to you guys is a real stellar performer because that's what I do. That's what I created with this big rig of mine, okay? I'm gonna shrink that down into some floor standards for you guys. And I'm gonna do my best to bring them to you at 4K um, retail price. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep it at that price for you guys. It's probably gonna mean no paint. It's gonna mean uh, plywood with a clear coat on it, okay? Which doesn't look bad. And I'm playing with, I'm still gonna stick with the driver that you guys saw, but I am playing with another driver. I'm gonna show you guys another driver. And this is also in an eight, you know, because uh, I'm trying some different sizes too. And so I've got this as a second um, design that I'm just playing with to listen to. But trust me, out of this, something kick-ass is going to come. Uh, it is, we're, I'm going to stick with this driver. I like it because 12s, to me, are a phenomenal uh, a, a place to give killer mid-bass. And um, teamed up with that, there is actually a tweeter in here, a compression driver, which is going to be uh, a great for that top-end extension. It's very smooth. It's not going to be harsh. And um, it's going to have solid bass usable bass down to 40 hertz uh so that's pretty unheard of but anyways just wanted to come back um for four grand anyways just wanted to come back with you guys oh another thing um the other thing is these puppies are going to be like 92 db sensitive um so they are going to be optimized for lower power amps, because I'm going to team these speakers up with an amp. Remember, I told you guys I'm going to bring you packages, audio packages, and I am going to bring something. I, my aim with this is to bring you something for 10 grand, where I have a kick-ass setup for 10G that includes some kick-ass speakers. Um, it, it's going to be a smaller amp, maybe 50 watts per channel, um, and... Um, We'll see about the source. I've got something up my sleeve for you guys that I think you might like. Um, but I am going to put together full rigs for you guys that are going to be, that you're not going to get the same value anywhere else except for from the Hi-Fi tribe. Um, and I wanted to tell you that these are going to be very tube friendly. Okay. Um, and look, remember how I told you about the tubes and tubes being for fun and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, these are going to be made so they're very good for tubes. So you guys can use them with here. I'll put the light on my face. Put this so you can use them with tubes, um, and and they will be easy to drive with tubes. But to to exemplify more of what I mean, because I don't think you all really understood. For business, I need solid state. For in other words, when I tune these speakers, I'm not using a tube amp. There's no way I would tune these using a tube amp because then I would tune them for whatever tube amp I have, whatever type of tube. I would tune it for an 845 or I would tune it for a 6550 or a KT88. In reality, you guys need something that fits all your different amps, right? So I'm tuning these using solid state. When it comes to business, like tuning a speaker, you need solid state. You can't tune a speaker and design a speaker using a vacuum tube. It would be ludicrous, okay? So when it comes to business, like tuning a speaker for design, I've got to use solid state. So I'm going to use a very transparent solid state amp to design these and wait till you see what's coming up. You guys got great things in store for you. Thanks for joining. Subscribe below. Um, boost this channel. Subscribe. And I'm going to bring you more and more of this. The more juice you guys give me, the more fruit you will bear. So anyways, cheers. See you.